Hey folks, so you ever plan on working on something for so long, you know, you just you just leave it on your project de project bench or your desk or whatever, you just leave it there for so long it becomes part of the natural scenery. Well, anyway, I've got these two Game Boys uh, here. These have been on my desk for probably a year now. I've been meaning to make a video on uh, fixing these screens, but quite frankly, I put it off so long that I um, actually bought more consoles to do this video, and, uh, well, I think it's finally time to get this video done. Uh, so anyway, I want to take a look at three Game Boys in particular here, or two Game Boys, excuse me, I swear I know how to count. And uh, let me just put these down. Oh, one of these probably has batteries in it. Hang on. Nope. Okay. So, I want to take a look at these two Game Boys in particular. Um, this one, I think, has batteries in it. Nope. One of my Game Boys has batteries in it. Just a moment. It was this one. I didn't notice because there was no power light. When I turned it on, nothing seemed to happen. But there's batteries in this one. Um, anyway, I guess we'll talk about this. So as you can see, the screen does clearly work. There's just this big black burnt spot in it. And if you just the contrast, you can sort of see it better. Let's pop a game in there. And the console itself does work perfectly fine, and it is playable if you sit here and cycle through the contrast, but it's not what I would call a pleasant experience, but it is definitely playable, but I don't want to get into that. Tetris is a bad game for testing because I'll sit here for 20 minutes testing. Uh, anyway, I want to talk about these two Game Boys in particular, uh, mostly because, well, I like yellow, and because this pink one is something that I think deserves a little bit of discussion. So you notice the damage on this screen looks a little bit different here. Ooh, throwing my battery. And this console is significantly more playable than the other one that I was just showing off. Uh, unfortunately, this issue is significantly worse and not fixable. Uh, if you'll notice, let me get my tweezers. There are these, uh, this like splotchy blob on the side here, and then off in the corner, it's kind of hard to see with the lighting the way it is, but you can see this, this black stuff just kind of creeping in from the side and the top here. Um, this is what's commonly referred to as screen rot, or in some communities, screen cancer. I don't really like that name. I think screen rot's a little bit more um, appropriate. But anyway, at, I mean, as you can see, the screen itself seems to work fine. But the problem is, what this issue is, it's basically the liquid crystals in the LCD leaking out. Uh, now, I don't know the particular cause. I don't know if it's just like wear and tear if it's UV or heat related, or maybe it's just a factory defect that's taken 20 years to crop up, you know? I, I don't know what the issue is. But nonetheless, this is unfortunately not fixable unless you have a, um, a, the specialized equipment to separate the layers of the panel, replace the liquid crystal inside, and replace the seals along it, and then rejoin the two pieces of glass that comprise the LCD. I don't have that. And quite frankly, with all the uh, aftermarket screens available these days, it's not worth it. Don't bother. Uh, now, I say all the aftermarket screens, and really it's just this one right now. Uh, it's that smaller one here. Um, but unless you've been living under a rock, you're probably aware that the Funny Playing IPS kit that's, that looks full size looks pretty good. That, that should be coming out pretty soon. I think the kits just started shipping... Uh, last night. Of course, today is the 15th. By the time I upload this video, I don't think it'll be last night anymore, but nonetheless. Alright, so finally on to the Game Boy I actually want to try fixing. Now, this console is significantly less uh, damaged than some of the other ones I was just showing off here, 
but the issue is identical and the fix is also identical. I'm going to be taking a look at this one today, see if I can't fix it. Uh, like I said, just, I don't know, I, I like yellow. And the other two yellow Game Boys that I have, um, I'm, they, they might require a little bit more work. Not for the screen itself, but just because I couldn't get them to boot. So, set this aside here. Let's start getting this torn down. So what specifically is happening that's causing this black spot is the adhesive under the polarizer layer on the front of the LCD is, uh, basically it's going bad. Uh, UV, as in UV light, heat and moisture kill all things over time. And um, I'm not sure which combination sets this off, but either way, Unfortunately, all pockets are subject to this. It's just a matter of time. So, if you can, try not to store your pocket in a windowsill. Alright. Set that aside. Oh, I didn't have... I forgot to grab the extra screw. Not thinking ahead, sorry. So, and to be perfectly clear, to be upfront about this, I haven't done this in a very long time, and the only other times I have done it, it did not go well. I'm hoping Today will be a little bit different, but I don't know how true that's going to be. Alright, so we don't have to do anything with this board. Just pull it out, set it aside. What we want is the screen. Easiest way to remove it is just give the shell a twist back and forth, and the adhesive should release. that aside too, won't need it, and this is what we want. So normally when backlighting one of these Game Boys, the, uh, the process is you peel off this reflector on the back here and the polarizer layer, you replace the polarizer with, um, with a new one you either cut to size or it came with your kit and it's already pre-cut, um, but in this case the burnt portion is usually on the top of the screen, so we have to pull off that polarizer too. So if you bought a backlight kit and it only came with one polarizer, you're probably going to need an extra one. Now, let me grab, before I get into this, one of the new Game Boys I bought. So this one, as you can see, it's significantly worse, but the shell itself isn't actually yellowed, so I don't think it was UV that got this one. If you compare this pink to another one I have, you can see the difference in color. This one is a lot closer to what it should be. Anyway, you can see there's like this texture on the cover here, and if I were to scratch that with my fingernail, you'd, you'd hear it. It sounds pretty rough. Um, that's what this screen looked like when I started, and as you can see, it's pretty much cleared up. I mean, I could just pop a new polarizer on this one and call it a day, but there's still, I don't know, the rear one looks like it's starting to go as well, so I'd need to continue cleaning this up and pull the rear one as well, but we'll save that one for later or for another video. Uh, but yeah, this is the same thing. The only difference between these two is this one's going to be much harder to peel up because the polarizer is just going to start flaking. But other than that, exact same issue. But with that one, you can just tell it's on the front. All right, so to get this started, I'm gonna start from this side. You can just slip a razor blade underneath. And unless you're extremely rough with it, you're not going to scratch the glass screen. You, you might scratch the uh, polarizer, but there's no 
This part is unfortunately done for, so it doesn't matter if you scratch it. All right. I'm just gonna get that started. I'm not gonna continue peeling it off with that blade because that's a snap away blade and I'm gonna snap it away. But I am going to grab my pliers so I can keep, oh. I think the polarizer just, oh, that's just the L uh, adhesive. Oh, that's great. All right, so that's what we want to remove. This garbage, throw it out. All right, so now I'm going to take pocket, I'm going to uh, connect this LCD back up here. Throw it in the rear casing so I can pop some batteries in this bad boy. And if we boot it up, you'll notice, oh look, there's nothing on the screen now. Did we just ruin it? Well, yes and no. Um, now I need the polarizer that I just lost. There it is. If we take our polarizing filter, put it in between, you notice the screen starts doing some things. Let's flip it over here. Can't see squat. Probably going to have to clean up that Oh, let's try adjusting the contrast, huh? There we go. You gotta try it both ways because sometimes they're directional. But I think we'll have to clean up the rest of that adhesive really before you can see what we're doing. But you can see I didn't break the screen, kinda. It's just a lot of adhesive to clean up. So let's move on to cleaning up this adhesive then. There's a proper way to do this and an easy way to do this. I'm gonna do this the easy way. Uh, mostly because I'm running out of the materials to do it the proper way. And as I'm sure y'all are aware, isopropyl alcohol is getting difficult to get these days. So I'm going to use some WD-40 to get this adhesive off. And you can hear the scratch and it's kind of hard. So. The best way to do this is to, I guess, just let it soak in a little bit. Let me go grab the WD-40. Right, and so here is the, uh, here's the stuff. Uh, I don't care what you've used it for before. I don't care what your uncle says. This is a solvent, not a lubricant. All right, so we'll spray some on the screen there. Probably shouldn't spray it directly on the screen, but YOLO, I guess. And we'll spread it around with this cotton swab I found at my desk. Now, if at all possible, you want to avoid getting it anywhere else on the screen, just on the surface. Uh, this stuff will eat away at plastics eventually, so I suppose this could cause screen rot. I don't think it will, but it's not impossible. Right. Let that soak in a little bit. And let's grab a razor blade. So I'm just going to use the razor blade out of my razor here because I don't know what I did with my extras. Now, literally just going to scrape. Ooh, don't don't do what I just did. I just pushed on the bottom this ribbon cable. Don't 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 do that. It's probably best to uh, if you're gonna do it like this, flip it over so you're pressing on the LCD. Now a scraper would be better, but 
I'm working with what I got. Take care not to scratch or um, touch the ribbon cables with this blade either. It will ruin it. The ribbon cable, that is, not the blade. The blade don't care. Basically, you can just sit here and scrape up all of the adhesive. Now I have seen a few times where the uh, polarizer comes off super easy. I'm actually kind of glad it didn't this time just so I can show in the video an easier way to, or at least a way to get the adhesive off. But sometimes it just comes off real clean and that's always nice. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. That's the bulk of the stuff. Rub my WD-40 cotton swab all over it again. So I missed a few spots. I'm trying to be very careful not to uh, destroy this ribbon cable. There we go. All right, we're done with this, so I'm gonna clean it up and put it back in my utility knife. All right. And now is the uh, now's the hard part, or I guess it's not the hard part. It's just the tedious part. Because the better you clean this up, the better it's going to look. Oh, and of course my isopropyl alcohol's over there. I'll be right back. Should have grabbed it when I was getting the WD-40, eh? But anyway, this is the stuff I'm using. Ninety-one percent. It's uh. Can't really see because as soon as I tip the bottle, no good moves around. But it's uh, got about this much remaining. <laughs> you can do this entire thing with just isopropyl alcohol. You don't need the WD-40. The WD-40 just speeds up the process. But nonetheless, if you do use it, you still got to clean it up. And this is a long process, so I'm probably going to pause while I do this, because this is going to take a while. I 
I think it usually helps, instead of using a cotton swab, use a, uh, use a microfiber cloth. So let's try that out, see what happens. Getting some isopropyl on it. See, there's still quite a bit of adhesive on there. I think I'll just need to sit here and try scraping again. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video now. At this point, all I'm going to keep doing is rubbing this with uh, isopropyl alcohol and see if I can't get the rest of the adhesive scraped off. I'll be back in a moment. All right, so that actually took significantly less long than I had anticipated. Uh, I went and found myself a, a scraper. This is much better than a razor blade and what I should have used in the first place. Um, so if, if you have one, this is the tool you want. But basically, you can see I've already cleared off about 80% of this LCD. You just run it across the top. And uh, the adhesive comes off just like that. And just keep going. Just be absolutely vigilant that you do not run the scraper into any of the ribbons. All right, so that's it. It's all cleaned up. We don't have to do any further cleanup on this thing. We're this is this is done. If you want to backlight your console, we still got a few more steps to take. But if you just wanted to repair your screen so that it's actually usable, this is all we need to do. So let's try it out again. Now. Hopefully I didn't damage it while I was manipulating it because it's entirely possible when I bent this ribbon down here, I totally ruined this thing. Hopefully not, but it's entirely possible. All right. Pop the game in there to hold it. And again, still nothing on the screen. That's to be expected. Now if we take the polarizer, look at that. Beauty. And yeah, you can still see a little bit of burn in the center there, but that's not bad at all. Right, so, like I said, if we were not backlighting this console, we'd be done. Just got to trim this, peel off the film, stick it down, Bob Gianti. But, I think we should go ahead and backlight this thing. Let's give it a shot. So, I mean, why not? I have somewhere, I had, uh-oh, whatever, I'll find it later. 
I have a bunch of backlight kits. They're not high quality kits, but I mean they're they're kits. Come on. Okay, so these are the kits I have. This is basically a pack I just bought on AliExpress. It was five kits. I've already used one of them. Now, if you guys have seen that video where I backlit a Pokewalker or more specifically a Wii U Fit Meter, that's the that's one of the backlits I used. I just cut it down to size. But all right, let's move on to removing the rear reflector. Now, this part is an absolute pain in the ass because you have this ribbon cable in the way. This ribbon cable is connected right here along the side, which wraps around, and right here on the bottom, which folds back. That means you only really have access... Well, let's untape this. You really only have access from like one corner. And it is super easy to break. One trick someone showed me a while back is you could take a binder clip and this thing is ridiculously rusty, I don't know why, but whatever. And eh, screw it, we'll use masking tape. I'm going to take a little bit of masking tape, throw it over this ribbon on the bottom here, and stick this binder clip right on there. And that'll prevent me from flexing this thing accidentally and damaging the solder joints that hold it together. But from here, the process is exactly the same. Start with this razor this time because it's already right here. And uh, just gonna jam that in the corner and start peeling. Ooh, that almost went into my finger. On that note, I think I'll stop using the razor. Right, just want to get that peeled up enough so I can grip it. And sometimes it comes up very nicely, which it is so far. Sometimes it doesn't. And I have a feeling once we get towards the center, we're going to have more issues. So usually what people do at this point is if you flip it over, and start peeling like this. We've got it. There are some people who are really good at this, and I applaud them because this is not, not easy. And 
I think I just put too much pressure on one or both of these solder joints. All right. Whew. <sighs> there we go. I don't think I killed it. But uh looks looks can be deceiving. Unfortunately, we can't really do much to test it out. We just got to continue because without either polarizer, it's going to be a pain in the butt to test. All right, so now we want... Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have prepared that front polarizer first. You know what? I'm just going to use that other polarizer. Since this kit does not come with a pre-installed resistor, we'll have to install that. Just the backlight. And I'm just going to use my own wire. So this thing goes in here, just like that. Actually, wait, I can't remember which way it goes around. These panels are directional. Because there's this, like, textured side on the back. It, let, me, let me light it up. It's easier to see when it's lit up. Wait, hang on. I don't want to blow this out. There's no current limiting on the power supply I'm using. So let me kill this light, and I guess this light, and probably that light over there. No, no, that's good enough. So as you can see, there's this like honeycomb pattern on this side, and on this side, it's just a much more even lighting. So you want the honeycomb on the back. And I know it's not really coming through on the video, but by just having this thing in hand, you can tell. And I just dropped that resistor. Hang on, I'll be right back. Nope, no clue where it went. I'm just grabbing a new one here. Okay. So it does not matter which side it goes on, positive or the negative. Uh, all right. That will go in there like that. So I guess with this particular kit with the red wire on the right. And I think we determined, yeah, it doesn't matter without polarizer actually in there. Let me cut off some polarizer. I'm just going to use this backlight as a guide because these are just cell phone polarizers. Bought these a long time ago. And we're just going to freehand it because it doesn't make too big of a difference. easier to cut a straight line than it is to draw one.
All right. And one of these sides might be adhesive, not that side. That would be convenient. Not that side either. Okay, so this is not an adhesive polarizer. That's fine. And I know I still need to cut one more, but we'll we'll get there. Oh shoot, this is adhesive. Oh no. times can I accidentally stick it down? Hang on, hang on. I have an idea. I have an idea. Oh. Oh no. I think I might need to cut a new piece of polarizer. Yep. Damn it! Oh well, I have plenty. And now I know it's adhesive. Alright, so for whatever size I bought these, there is enough to make two. And then some if you want to make a uh, Terrible amalgamation. As it turns out, I'm much better at drawing vertical lines than horizontal lines. Who'd have guessed? Right, one more. This time. I'll try not to ruin it. Slide that in there, get it lined up, and stick it down. And hopefully you cannot see those air bubbles. By you, I mean anyone when this is all assembled. Eh, could be worse. Could be better, but could be worse. Let's try it out, shall we? Make sure I didn't completely ruin this before I cut another polarizer. And yes, I know we still need um, to actually hook up the backlight and yeah, another polarizer. Uh, where's my shell? There it is. Hey, look at that. No, it's kind of hard to see, but it's working. 
But I'm out of this kind of polarizer. So I need to use the one that came with the kit. Which I was avoiding, not because I think they're low quality or anything, but just because the shape does not look conducive to getting multiple uses out of them. Or the size, rather. But I suppose it's fine. Yeah, as you can see, I didn't fill the screen with the polarizer I stuck to the bottom. Um, that wasn't intentional. That was kind of accidental. I got it off center, but it doesn't matter because it covers the whole actual area of the LCD. Yeah, that doesn't help at all. But if I kill this light, it will go. Let the camera focus. No. Nice. Yeah, okay, enough playing with that. You'll have to take my word for it. It does look better. It does look pretty good at my at the angle I'm sitting at. It's just not good for the camera. Okay. Now, one quick thing before we cut the last polarizer here. I'm not biverting this screen. For a pocket, it does not make a huge difference. In fact, I have a biverted pocket right here. And um, yeah, the screen itself does have some problems, but I mean, it doesn't, the contrast is always gonna be garbage on these things. There's only so much you can do. Um, so I'm gonna leave this one as is and well, quite frankly, if I had a bivert module, I'd show you the process. But if you are biverting, the only thing you'd need to do differently is go ahead and twist one of the polarizers. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's the front one or the back one, just need to do one of them. Um, I didn't bother mentioning that on the back install because I figured I still had to do the front one. And, well, quite frankly, it's just easier to twist the front one than it is the back one. Hopefully the adhesive is on the uh, the uh, side that gets applied. Okay. Here, you know what? Before we move on. I'm going to take a couple minutes and clean up my desk in case I drop a polarizer again. That way I don't completely ruin the sticky side. Or actually, I think I might just try and clean off this polarizer. Um, but either way, I'm going to take a quick break. And uh, I don't have to because my camera is not forcing me. You know, I can keep filming. But I actually want to take a break. It's kind of weird. Anyway, BRB. All right, so I was able to clean it. What I did, um, just literally put it under the sink, literally, hot water and soap, dish soap, and you can clean it up. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing wired up because I'm going to do something that I have seen done before, but not frequently. And quite frankly, I just want to try it out myself. So I need to go ahead and remove the tape on here. Somehow. There we go. I mean, it's just masking tape. It should come off easily. There we go. Alright, I'm actually going to wire this up with a method that um, a Reddit user by the handle of the 8-Bit Kingdom showed me, or, well, not me specifically, but posted about, and, uh, I don't know, looks pretty cool, so we're gonna try it out. The, uh, biggest thing is I want this panel to stop moving, but that's probably not gonna happen. Instead of wiring this up to the Game Boy Pocket itself, we're just going to wire it straight into the screen. Uh, but to do that, I need to trim these wires down. This one is gonna go right about there. 
So I need to cut off that much. And I do already have my soldering iron warmed up here. We're going to try out my other iron. Just because I neglect it. I don't ever use it. Alright. So we want to solder two. And I'll, I'll throw a link to some bigger images. Or maybe I'll do an overlay or something. I don't know. Stop focusing on the reflection. Add some flux. Because flux makes everything better. All right, and his wiring, hang on, I'm gonna double check this with a multimeter. In the image, it looks like both, slip that in there. It looks like he um, solders it to the last pin, but these look like they're all connected, the first three, and they are. Okay, so it doesn't matter. That's what I thought. trying to think about how I want this positioned. I think like that will be good. And I'm probably going to end up putting some glue down on here to hold everything in place because I, I worry about these wires shifting and then breaking those solder contacts. All right, so next, more flux. I also need that resistor that I lost again. Nice. Don't worry, there's one more in the back. Oh wait, no, there's two more. Some backlight kits, like the ones from uh, Handheld Legend in particular, I believe they already have the resistor built into the backlight panel, so you do not need this. But I'm using cheap backlight kits that have a separate resistor, so we need to wire up the resistor. All right. So I'm going to trim this nice and short because I want that right about there. So I'm going to cut that down to here. And then we're going to have that go that way. Fingers are sticky because there's flux on them. Okay. And have that come down. What about here? So I think we can cut that to. You no. Know. Strip some wire off. Let's tin it. this down this is too long all right this needs to go one two three four five over from the end so that is one two three this is way too long I need to trim this down. Okay, let's try that again. One, two, 
three, four, five. Oh shoot. This would probably go significantly better if I didn't have to wire up this resistor. I had it and then I had to clear that short and then I lost it again. Uh, I'm not having a good time with this. I don't recommend doing this. Especially not with a resistor. Okay, there we go. Now I need to connect those two. Okay. Okay. That's not terrible. I really don't like it, but it's not terrible. All right, let's test it out before I go any further. Because if I just ruin this thing, I want to stop now. I don't waste my time. I do not recommend doing that, but. You know me, I always gotta try something new. Even if it's dumb. Alright, what do I do with my batteries? So here they are. Hey! Let's see if the screen still works. Hey, you can't see shit because it's not in focus. Oh, there's some lines. That's what I was worried about. That's okay, we might be able to fix that. We'll come back to it, though. I'm going to... Uh... Let me get this polarizer installed first. wiping it down because I keep handling this thing. Alright. 
should go just like that. Oh no! There's that. Oh, that's terrible. Look at all those bubbles. I'll try and work those out, but I'm not going to be able to do anything about this, uh, this dot right there. I didn't clean it as well as I thought I did. Alright. Let's see if we can do anything about these lines. I think you need to, uh, well, I'm not sure if you can do this with a pocket, and I'm afraid to just run this iron along those bare contacts while this is running, because I haven't actually researched this. I know this is how you do it on a DMG, but... DMG screens are a little bit different. I'm thinking maybe I can cheat by just gluing it in place. It's probably not a good idea. But, I don't know. Let's try one more thing. Oh, you can see how bad that screen is. Oof! I guess that's one argument in favor of not using polarizers with adhesive. Where is... Oh. It's not there. I don't know where it is. I want to try out my flash cart, but I have no idea where I left it. Hmm. Well, okay. I'm going to, uh... I'm going to pause for a few minutes, see if I can't work out these bubbles. I'm going to basically just go over it with my plastic spudger and try and walk them towards the edge. Uh, but I'll be back. Right, so good news and bad news. Good news. I got rid of pretty much all the bubbles under the polarizer. Ultimately I just ended up cutting a new piece and throwing it down and that seemed to do the trick. This one still has the protective film on it so that's what that line is. Uh, bad news. I did try it and I did look it up after it wasn't working. If you, the soldering iron trick to get rid of the vertical lines, that only works on the original DMG style Game Boys. It doesn't work on Game Boy Pockets. However, if I fold this ribbon up or just apply pressure to it, all the lines go away. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is just, once I got it in the shell, I'll put a, um, I'll put like a big chunk of foam or something right there so that the motherboard pushes down on it. So we're going to go ahead and move on, but uh, just a couple quick things. I did end up putting glue over my solder joints. Not because I don't trust my solder joints, but because I don't trust the original solder joints on this thing, and I don't want to accidentally tug on these wires and break the solder. So, um, oh, and one more thing. I ended up putting a little bit of this stuff down uh, between the backlight panel. So on top of the backlight panel, but underneath the LCD. This is one of those like privacy reflective screen protectors. It's for an iPhone. It's not nearly as reflective as I remember them being. Uh, so maybe I'll have to track down an older model. Or actually, I don't know if this is for an iPhone. It's for something. Actually, it might be because that looks like a home button down there. Um, and uh, I don't know. I figured maybe this will help with uh, outdoor viewability since we've already removed the reflector. Uh, so yeah, let's, I guess let's go ahead and continue. Just got a couple more things to take care of. So let's go ahead and get this taken apart again. Now, while I was taking a break, I should have taken that time to go find my flash cart. But I didn't think about it until I started recording again. Anyway, let's unplug this. And I'm going to go ahead and set this aside for now because the work we're doing is going to be on this motherboard itself. So, Game Boy Pockets are noto notorious, excuse me, geez, uh, for 
having really annoying power issues like either terrible battery life or you know you're playing Pokemon just fine and then you got to save and reboot your Game Boy and oh look your save is gone um, backlighting the console or using a flash cart only makes the issue significantly worse because the uh, this DC DC converter on the bottom here just can't quite handle the load so a common mod is to disconnect the 5 volts from this DC converter and just power the backlight off of it and then power the system off of an auxiliary voltage regulator. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just disconnect the 5 volts entirely since I have it connected through the screen and power it off of this regulator. Now this regulator is super overkill for the job. While it it should be able to handle um, boosting shoot I don't know if it goes down as low as these batteries do but we'll find out I guess and uh, but it does handle over 1.2 amps so way overkill for the job hopefully it doesn't make the speaker too much noisier but we'll uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there I guess but because I didn't look this up ahead of time let's find out which pin is the 5 volt pin here. So this keeps getting higher and higher. Come on. 3 volts is good enough. Just try booting that up. It's not booting. Oh, there it goes. I guess I need to clean that battery contact there. Okay. Set my meter to volts here. We don't care about the power usage, we just care about the volts. Okay. So ground is going to be pin 31. Stay, damn it or this square right here. And I believe five volts is this pin. Nope, that's three volts. That is the negative 16 for the screen, or negative 18. Oh, you can't even see the meter, whoops. So pin number five, is the negative 18 for the LCD. Pin number four is a ground, I guess. Pin number six, zero volts. Pin number one, three volts. And pin number three, uh-oh. Why can't I find five volts? Oh, it's right there, it's the top pin, pin number six. Ta-da! Okay. Oh, sorry, I dropped the D-pad for my Game Boy. I don't want to lose that. Oh, you know what? I'm going to... Put this back. Since we're pretty much done. Ta-da! Okay. I have managed to lose the start and select buttons as well, but that's a bridge we'll burn when we get there. Okay, so it was pin number six. Shouldn't be too bad. So we still need this voltage regulator for the LCD. 
I suppose if you were doing one of those um, like all-in-one backlight mods, you could just pull this entire voltage regulator just for the five volts. I think that's disconnected. Nope, it's on the bottom too. <clears throat> it's kind of rough. All right, let's try something else. Oh, that is rough to get to. Eh, maybe it'll be fine. It's not happening. With that big capacitor in the way, that's not going to come out easily. Not with the solder sucker. All right. Let's find my tweezers and try something else. Oh, you know, I just had a thought. A way to make this significantly easier. Snip. Snip. All done. All separated. And I am just pulling off the rest of that pin I just cut. I didn't need to pull it from that side, but I do need to pull it from this side. Oh, it doesn't actually fit. We need to pull it out this way. Desolder it from this side. There we go. Now I can hit this with some desoldering wick. And that should be the end of that. Nice. All right. So I should have plenty of room in the case. Mm, it's going to be tight with those capacitors there. I think I'll put it over behind the speaker. If I stick that there. bit of double-sided tape somewhere. Yes. Nice. Just to try it out. I believe that should fit right there. And then the speaker, yep, all is well. That's probably not the best spot, but it's good enough. Okay. So that... Oh, shoot, we need... 
Oh, no, we don't need to disconnect that. We just need to line it up in parallel. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I got it. I got it. So we need to wire up three of these four pins here. Uh, on most voltage regulators, um, they look something like this with just the three pins. This one has four pins for symmetry. I don't know. But the V out minus and the V in minus are common. So these two are shorted together. We just need to wire up one of these two, one of the minuses, and then the V out plus and the V in plus. The V out plus is going to go to the PCB right here. And I'm going to use, I'm not going to use this wire. I'm going to use this stuff, 26 gauge Kynar, mostly because it's what I have, but I like I like this stuff better than the other wire I had in my hand. That other wire was just um, like Ethernet. All right, so that needs to go there. This is going to be the V out, but that's going to be upside down, so that's okay. Oh wait, no, that goes like that. Screw it. I didn't need to remove that solder from the hole. It's going to go to the V out, which is going to be on that side. Now pretty much any wire that you have will work for this. The uh, only issue is that you want to use, I normally use 30 gauge Kynar. 30 is a little bit on the, uh, on the small side for something like this. It should work, but there's better options. Okay. Oh, I should wire this on top. That would make more sense. Yeah. You can't even see what I'm doing. I'm out of frame. Sorry. Just tinning the contacts. But the 5 volt out is the out plus. So this is going to go... Right there. And what this should do, ah, oh, my wire it needs to be just a little bit longer. Shoot. Well, that's fine. Should have been paying better attention. This should allow us to play games without having to worry about whether it's going to eat our saves or not. I didn't consider the fact that the wire would be uh, not going completely straight. Get in the hole. There we go. All 
right. So that is the five volts out. Now we need to wire up the five volts in, or the, not five volts, but the voltage in, which should be, continuity. it's going to be on this pin here. So it's probably one of these. I assume it's one of these. It's not one of these. Shoot. I think I might have to go look this up then. There's at least one of these ground. Okay, so this bottom one is ground. I can use that. I'm, I thought this was a voltage in. I might have to... You no, know, let's find out what pin that is. I already forgot. Oh, it's not going to boot. Because I don't have that wired up. Never mind. All right. Goes along, oh, right under on the right. Should be C33 on this pin right here. No, do I have that wrong? Well, darn. Is it that one then? All right, I might need to go pause and do some more research because I'm afraid I might not know what I'm doing. I'll be back in a few minutes. Well, a few seconds for you. All right, don't worry guys, I figured it out. I was so excited to use my multimeter, I did something real dumb. All right, see, I was, I was trying to trace this, reverse engineer the circuit, but if you just turn the board over, it's labeled VCC, ground, ground, we're fine. <laughs> so for VN, I'm gonna be using this pin right here, pin number one, and for ground, I'm gonna be using pin number three or pin number four, it doesn't matter, they're the same thing. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, pin number four for ground, just cause I have a wire that's already cut the proper length. Add some fresh solder to this. Probably shouldn't have. Come on, there we go. But that's okay. There's still 25 year old flux on here. And I know this bottom one is the ground. One more wire. Sorry, forgot to move the camera. And so we're going to go from this wire, or from this point, to there, but I'm going to cut it long. Because maybe. Maybe after all these years, I'm starting to learn my lesson. Can't make a wire longer, but you can sure as hell make it shorter. Yeah, no flux, that worked just fine. Or no extra solder. Solder. Boom, all done.
now I just need to secure this in place. I should, well actually I don't have to secure it, but I definitely should insulate it. Not that I think it's going to short out on anything, but just in case there are some pretty meaty solder balls on the bottom. Uh, I think a little bit of Captain should do the job. Yeah, I know it ain't perfect, but no one's ever going to see it except for everyone watching this video. What I mean to say is I'm not using a clear shell for this Game Boy. Okay, we're in the home stretch. I need to find the start and select buttons that I've misplaced. So I don't want to put this thing together multiple times. Ugh. Alright, hang on. I think I have more. Oh no, it's Game Boy Color stuff. I think. Do they use the same buttons? No, but close enough. Alright, shoot. I gotta pause one more time and find those buttons. Don't worry. All is well. I found the buttons. They're the original buttons, too. I didn't just take apart another Game Boy. Alright. So you can even sell it. see, there's a little bit of green something or other right there. Green something or other right there noise. Alright. No, I'm just fucking around. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. This is the wrong bit. I'm just going to put it together without testing because it's just going to work perfectly fine. There's going to be zero issues. I'm never going to have to take this part again. Plug the screen in. God, I've done that so many times. Get the whole thing put back together and then it doesn't work. No, you just forgot to plug it in like a moron. <sighs> okay. that up a little. All right.
push the wires out of the way. I'm preventing the shelf from closing all the way. There it goes. I hope. If I have to take it back apart again, that's why. Right. Batteries. Battery cover. I don't remember what game's on here. I don't know if it's a Game Boy Pocket compatible game. Ooh, there's a problem there. There's a uh, dark spot. I'm gonna have to take it apart and figure out what that is. Of course, I said I'm never gonna have to take it apart again, but I knew this would happen. All right. Oops, I was already off. Moment of truth time. I've clearly forgotten something. Shoot. I've got nothing on the screen. This went terribly. I mean, it's booting. We can hear that much. Try a different game just in case. Old Faithful. No. It's probably related to the, uh, damn it. To the voltage regulator. I mean, it's clearly plugged in right, or wired up right, because you can hear that chime, which means the Game Boy is booting. Without 5 volts, the CPU won't initialize. Where's my power supply? There it is. Okay, so it's booting. That much is clear. Right, so the input voltage to my voltage regulator is the output voltage of my power supply, which makes sense. The output voltage is an even 5 volts, which is also fine. So I have no idea why this isn't working. Maybe it's just the screen. You know what, I think it is just the screen. Because this thing, glare aside, does work. Hmm. 
Uh oh. Yes, let's take it apart one more time. That dark spot on the screen is from this little square on the PCB. I don't know that there's any avoiding that, aside from just backing off the screws a little bit. Or, oh, I know, I know, I forgot a step, hang on. Let's pop this out. This will give us just a little bit extra space if we remove the adhesive. I prefer to leave it in, but clearly that's not an option. Isn't the seating? Oh, there it goes. We'll stick that right there. And maybe that'll solve all of my problems. Probably not, but one can hope. This is why you test it before putting it together. It never works if you put it together without testing. It's a known fact. Ta-da! Nice. Switch. That went together much smoother this time. I see no dark spot either.
Oh, there's the dark spot. Back all this off. Uh, womp womp. Apparently, gold version is only a Game Boy Color title. No, I'm kidding. Um, the ROM that is on here is not gold version. It's just based off gold version. What's about actually? Try my new game. I found this. Looks cool. Haven't played it yet. Ooh. I'm kidding, I have played it, but only for a couple minutes, just to see if it worked. So it's still got a few issues. Um, I actually have no idea how this game is played. I'm assuming it's similar to Tetris, but, but there's bombs. Um, anyway, yeah, it still has a few issues things that I would like to have fixed, um, but unfortunately I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not a professional. Contrary to popular belief, I just play one on TV. But there are a few things I would have liked to have done differently, like there are quite a few bubbles on the rear polarizer, not on the front one, but on the rear one. Uh, that would have been nice to clear those out. But taking it apart again would have been a pain in the butt. And I already put all those lines on the LCD and I don't know, it just it wasn't making me feel comfortable. I wasn't feeling very confident in my ability to fix it, so or at least in my ability to fix it without making it significantly worse. Like we saw all those lines that I put in the middle there. But overall, I'm pretty pleased. My total cost was the 15 or so dollars that I spent on this Game Boy, and then the two dollars for the backlight kit. Oh, and I suppose another couple bucks for the polarizers I bought. But, ta-da! All works, and now you have my secret password. Yeah, these backlight kits are not the greatest, but they're certainly perfectly serviceable. I think one of the issues is that they're a little bit thicker than some of the other aftermarket kits, because I have this Game Boy that I made, and I don't have that that uh, that dark spot. Uh, this one also has some lines that I'm actually going to take apart in a couple minutes and try and take care of. Uh, if not, I do have one, two more LCDs ready for backlights, so I'll figure something out, but that was an adventure. Um, yeah, if, if you guys are planning your own Game Boy Pocket backlight, there are probably better videos out there, uh, but if you, if you stuck with me, I want to thank you. It's been a journey. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Next, next time I do a Game Boy Pocket video, I'm gonna have a uh, I'm gonna have an IPS screen to put in one of these things. So, um, but otherwise, I think I'm gonna go ahead and backlight another one or two because, like I said, I have I have the screens. Why not? Um, otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic night. Just wanna add a quick addendum. I was playing with one of the extra screens that I have. This one still has the OEM front polarizer on it. Uh, I never had to pull that off, but it I removed the rear reflector and the rear polarizer, and this screen was originally in a, um, a biverted console. It was originally in my blue one that I had earlier. Uh, so I had removed the rear polarizer as well, but with the stock front polarizer, it's not... 90 degrees 
on the aftermarket ones, you see both of these angles look like garbage on the screen. It's actually, you want to use 45 degrees with the replacement polarizer. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to get good contrast no matter what you do. Um, but just, just thought I'd share. Polarizers are neat. Uh, but that's probably why these ones are cut so big, because at 45 degrees I can still fit a whole screen in there. But anyway, just wanted to add that before I uh, finish backlighting this pocket and upload this video. Thanks for watching, guys.